On this lesson, we will discuss arcs and chords and the relationship with the circle. So let's start by looking at this introduction question, which says, let's consider the following circle with two triangles, TOU and ROS. Now, is there any conclusion that we can draw from this figure? Well, let's see. There's also two pieces of information that is also stated. And the first one is, let's assume that the length of the arc TU, so that would be this arc. Let's assume that the length of the arc TU is equal to the length of the arc RS. So we're going to assume that those two arcs are equal of length. Now, what are some conclusions that we can draw from this figure? Well, the first thing that stands out is that O is the center of the circle. Now, since O is the center of the circle, then notice that TO is the radius of the circle. And also OR can be seen as the radius of the circle. The same can be said about OS and the same can be said about OU. Since these four line segments are all the radius of the circle, so therefore all these segments must be congruent to each other. So this is one conclusion that we can draw. TO is congruent to OR, which is also congruent to OS, which is also congruent to OU, because they're the radius of the circle. Now, what else can we say about this? Well, another thing that stands out is the idea that the arc TU is equal of length to the arc RS. Now let's think about this for a second. TU, it's an arc. And notice that this arc has an ending and a starting point with the central angle O, I'm sorry, UOT. And the same can be said about RS. RS has a starting and an ending angle, uh, has a starting and an ending point with the angle ROS. So therefore, if these two arcs are congruent to each other, then therefore, these two central angles must be congruent to each other. So angle two is congruent to angle one because they're central angles. Of, uh, okay, I'll say congruent, congruent arcs. And those arcs are TU and RS. Now, is that all that we can say about this figure? Well, now, if we concentrate on the triangles themselves, TOU and also triangle ROS, notice that now we can say that those two triangles are congruent to each other. Triangle TOU is congruent to triangle ROS. What's the reason behind it? Well, notice that we have a side angle side. We have a side angle side. So now we know that those two triangles are congruent due to the same um, side angle side congruence congruence theorem. And this seems to be all. This seems to be all that we can say about this figure. Now let's have a discussion about this figure themselves. Now it says using the figure from the introduction. So now we're going to concentrate on the same figure. Here's a new vocabulary word. And this new vocabulary word is what we're going to call a chord. The line segment TU, the line segment TU and the line segment RS are said to be chords of a circle. Now, are we going to be defining chords? Well, chords are just line segments that have an ending or have a starting point and end point of the circumference of the circle. 
So it is just a line that starts and ends at the circumference of the circle. So it doesn't go beyond the circle or it doesn't stop in the middle of the circle. It just starts and ends at the circumference of the circle or at actual points in the circle, I should have said. So now the question is, is there any conclusion that we can draw from these two arcs given in this figure? Well, notice that those two arcs seem to be corresponding parts on triangle TOU and ROS. So notice that now since, since triangle TOU was congruent to triangle ROS, then TU it's congruent to RS. And the reason is because of CPC, TC. They seem to be congruent corresponding parts. So the big conclusion here is that given, given congruent chords, I'm sorry, given congruent arcs, because that's how we started. We said that this arc TU is equivalent to RS. So if we've been given congruent or two, two congruent arcs, then then we have two congruent chords. And this is a very important idea to understand in any circle in any circle, in any circle, if you've been given two congruent arcs, just like it was stated, if we've been given two congruent arcs, TU is congruent to RS, then we can say that those two chords, TU, is going to be congruent to RS. And that's our big conclusion here. So given two congruent arcs, we can assume that we have two congruent chords. So that's a theorem. We're not going to prove it, but it is important to understand. Now, here's just a small vocabulary word, which is just like we do have midpoints in a line, we also have midpoints in an arc. So a point Y is called the midpoint, which in this case, we're going to assume that Y is a midpoint. So we can only say that Y is the midpoint of this big arc, X, Y, Z. If X, Y, let me actually do it in different color. If X, Y is congruent to Y, Z. So if you have a big arc and you can cut it up into two congruent pieces, then that point where you cut it is what we're going to refer to as the midpoint. So it's, it is it follows the same idea with the with the line. It's just just a small observation that we can expand this with actual arcs as well. So a we can have midpoints in an arc, and we know that that point is going to be considered midpoint if you can cut the whole arc into two congruent smaller arcs. One theorem that we're going to be proving is the following. So here we have a theorem. It says prove the diameter, prove that a diameter that is perpendicular to a chord bisects the chord and its arc. In other words, given a circle, so here we have a circle with the center O, and we we, sh we know that this diameter CD is perpendicular to AB. We want to show that this chord is going to be cut in half. So we want to show that AZ is congruent to BZ. And in addition, we want to show that D is also a midpoint. We want to show that AD is congruent to DB. So let's get started. Let's start our statement in reason. Anyway, for any proof that we have in geometry, we always want to start with the givens. So first, my first given 
is that we have a circle O. And in addition to that, I know that CD is perpendicular to AB. And this is my given. Now we're going to introduce two auxiliary lines. Let's introduce two auxiliary lines. We're, I'm going to refer to as OA and OB. So we're going to say that AO, it is going to be congruent to OB. Because those are those auxiliary lines. And it's not just auxiliary lines, but those are actually the radius of the circle O. Because now notice that now that we have this, if we concentrate on these two small triangles that we have created, we can also say that angle OZB is equivalent to 90 degrees. And also, triangle OZA is 90 degree. Well, and the reason behind it is that CD is perpendicular to AB. And now, if we stop here for a second and we actually concentrate on the triangles now, notice that we have enough information to say that these two triangles are congruent. Because OZ is definitely congruent to itself due to the reflexive property. So now notice that we can say that OZA is congruent to OZB because we have two right triangles. We know that their hypotenuse are congruent. And in addition, we know that one of those legs are congruent as well. So now, this is actually five. So now we can say that triangle OZA is congruent to triangle OZB. And this is because of HL congruence theorem. Because the first thing that we showed was that these two triangles were right triangles. And we did that. We have to state that there were 90 degrees on it. And now we know that under those two triangles, their hypotenuse are congruent to each other since there are the radius. And in addition to that, we know that one leg is congruent, so we can use the HL congruence theorem. So now we know that those two triangles are congruent to each other. Since we know that these two triangles, let me actually highlight them. Since we know that these two triangles right here are congruent to each other. Notice that AC corresponds to ZV. So therefore, AC is congruent to ZV. And the reason behind it is because of CPCTC, because they are corresponding sides. So notice that now we have shown the first statement that we wanted to show. We have shown that AZ is congruent to ZV. Now, what we want to show is that the arc AD is congruent to DB. Well, let me actually make some space for this. Let me cut the first three lines. All right. So we're going to continue now. So now we're going back to seven. Well, what do you, what, what else can we also say about the congruency of those tri two triangles? Because we definitely want to, you know, keep using this, this big statement that we just did. Well, since those two triangles are congruent to each other, also notice that angle AOZ is congruent to triangle ZOV. This angle right here, it should be congruent to this angle right here due to CPC ETC. We shown that those two triangles were congruent. Notice that this angle corresponds to this angle. Since both triangles were congruent, then those two angles definitely must be congruent to each other.
And now we can say, let me actually use uh, purple now. And now notice that A O D, this the central angle A O D is congruent to the central angle D O B, which is what we just shown here. And since we have those two angles are congruent to each other, then therefore these two arcs must be congruent to each other. And this is exactly what I wanted to show. We wanted to show that AD, the arc AD, is congruent to the arc BD. And the reason behind it is because of angle AOZ being congruent to triangle ZOV. And that's all that we wanted to show. What we have shown now is that for any circle, let me just, oops, sorry. Let me actually just erase all this so we can just state our big conclusion. What we have said is this, in any circle, if the diameter of the circle is perpendicular to a chord, then the diameter will cut the chord in half. In other words, AZ is going to be congruent to ZV. And also, the diameter will cut the arc AB into two equivalents arcs AD being congruent to DB. So this is what we've just shown. Given any diameter, if the diameter is perpendicular to any chord, then the diameter will cut the chord in two equal segments, and also it will cut the arc into two equal segments. So this is a very important thing to understand. Under theorem number three, we're not going to exactly state the theorem, I'm sorry, we're not going to prove the theorem, we're just going to state it. And we're going to use this as a small example to state the theorem, which the last theorem that we're going to be discussing in this video is in the same circle or in congruent circles. So this statement can be true for if we're talking about in the same circle or two congruent circles. If the chords are equidistant from the center, then they are congruent. So what we're saying here is that for any circle, let me actually try to make this a little bit larger. So for any circle, if we draw two chords, and those two chords are, let's assume that this is our center. If those two chords are equidistant from the center, let's assume that the length here is three and the length here is three. If these chords are equidistant to the center, then those chords are going to be congruent to each other. Let me actually, A, B, C, D. Then we can say that the chord CD is congruent to AB. So this is what we want to illustrate on the first statement of this theorem. In any circle, if you have two chords and those two chords are equidistant to the center, then those two chords must be congruent. And now what the second statement is trying to say is quite the opposite. In any circle, If you have two chords let's use the same letters a b c d if you have two chords and if those two chords are congruent to each other then they must be equidistant to the center 
let me actually give it circle O, let me call this point R, let me call this point S, then BO must be congruent to OS. So it's pretty much stating the same theorem, but just it's just the converse of each other. In any circle, if two chords are equidistant to the center, then they must be congruent, and the opposite as well. If you have two chords and they're congruent, then therefore they must be equidistant to the center. So let's just do a small example. So let me just bring this here because this figure is for the example that we do have here on the bottom. In the direction got, got a raise here, but pretty much what we want to do is this small example here is that we want to find the value of x. Well, notice that x is right here. This is our objective. X is right here, so we want to know the value of x. Well, what do we have here? Well, notice that QS, if we extend this, this needs to be the diameter of the circle. So if the diameter of the circle is perpendicular to the chord, according to this theorem that we just proved a couple seconds ago, if you have a diameter and it's perpendicular to the chord, then the chord is going to get cut into two congruent parts. So therefore, if RS is 3, then ST must be 3 as well. Then we know that ST is congruent to, I'm sorry, has a value of 3. But now notice that RT, RT has a value of 6 now. And also UB has a value of 6. So now notice that you have two chords that are congruent to each other. And what we have just shown here is that if I have two chords that are congruent to each other, then it must, they must be equidistant from the origin. So therefore, uh, let me give this a different, uh, let's just name it W. Then WQ must be congruent to QS. Then therefore, X must be of a value of 4. So this is just a small explanation about how, what is the relationship between the chords inside or inside the circle.